I'm Paul Weston, the, the lifeboat coxswain, St Ives lifeboat. I've been coxswain for three years. Uh, before that, I was the second coxswain for seven years, and I've done a total of almost 25 years now for the R and R. In recent years, we've had a variety of calls. Uh, a lot of the time, going out to assist vessels that were in trouble. A good example of that was in the summer. It was a lovely day, lovely fine day, and there was a yacht out there with an elderly couple on. And the lady had been airlifted to the hospital at Trelesk, leaving the old chap there on his own. He was quite elderly. The question was asked, did, was the old chap okay on his own? And what happened was the helicopter guy spoke to the lady and she said, no, I'd like somebody to go out and make sure that he's all right. And he, he was a good 30 odd miles off, which is a fair old trip, like two hour trip. And I'll never forget it. We came up alongside him and he sort of turned around and saw the lifeboat. And he said, you haven't come all the way out here for me, have you? And I said, yeah, we have. Are you OK? He said, I'm fine. Thanks very much for coming. That was it. We turned around and came home again. Another two hour trip home. So sometimes it's like that and, you know, over the years I've seen obviously quite a few very sad things uh, and occasionally a very happy outcome. So it's a balance of emotions really. Or often forgotten that the lifeboat doesn't just involve the crew and the crew members. Um, he, here in St Ives especially, I think we've got, uh, we all act as a team, the fundraisers, the ladies that work in the shop, the guild members, and so on and so forth. And everybody sees the lifeboat going out of the boat house, trundling across the beach, and sometimes see it out in poor weather. But one thing that's often forgot are the people that are left behind, the wives and the girlfriends and the families, who actually do deserve credit as well as everybody else because the rockets, or maroons as they were called, were stopped a few years ago because they were deemed dangerous. And we've all got pages now, which is fine except for the fact that the lifeboat can be going out Nobody knows whether we're going on an exercise or on a service call, and we could be gone for eight hours or so, and our wives, girlfriends, families don't know that we've gone. And uh, so it's not just that sort of thing they have to put up with. They have to put up with the, the emotions that people take home with them. We, we, we've picked up a lot of... Uh, deceased person but you do have to remember and I always impress upon the others to remember that whoever you pick up is, the, is somebody's husband, somebody's father, somebody's son. Yeah Sue joined the crew a few months ago and that is a first for St Ives Lifeboat to have a, a woman crew member actually on board the lifeboat. Um, I welcome it, it's fine, it's, it's, it's good stuff. I think, you know, the future is in all sorts of people being involved with the lifeboat. One of the highlights for me, obviously, of the whole quarter of a century was May the 17th last year and meeting the Queen. Brilliant, absolutely unforgettable. I was quite nervous initially to see what had happened, but it just all went really very well, and she was brilliant, and everybody else was. For the past 25 years, it's been a major part of my life. It took up a lot of my time and energy, and. Uh, 
I th I am looking forward to being able to do normal things, like just drive out of town and get some fuel in the car and things like that. On October the 1st this year, I'm going to retire from work. And I've also made my mind up in recent months that uh, that's that would be a good time to step down from the R&I. Um, I want to spend more time with my family and try and start repaying them for the last 25 years that I've spent down here. And I do wish the lads that remain behind a good experience in the lifeboat. Um, and I wish them, I hope they always stay safe and they'll always obviously come out. But good luck to them really. I think it's quite unique in my position as coxswain for somebody from Stoke-on-Trent, the Potteries, to um, come down here and end up as coxswain of the lifeboat. It's not something that I intended doing when I came down here in the first place, but uh, it's something that I know quite a few people in the Potteries, and in particular in the village that I come from, a little village called Brown Edge. She's on the border of Staffordshire Moorlands, the Peak District. Quite a few people there, obviously quite proud of the fact. I don't know whether everybody knows, but the captain of the Titanic came from the Potteries. <laughs> E.J. Smith came from Hanley, which is about four miles away from the village where I come from. Hmm.